Let's bring in Oppenheimer's Colin Rush and Barclays' Brian Johnson as the stock is a little bit off of the uh, opening highs. Guys, it's good to see both of you. Colin, a lot of the uh, material being written today suggests that they once again put a little more white space uh, between them and their legacy competitors in terms of operational efficiency. Is that fair? Absolutely, and, and this has been building for, for multiple years. This company is rooted in materials and software engineering. We're seeing the net result of that. That's been, you know, over a decade in the making, and, and they're really changing processes, you know, fundamental design of these vehicles, and, and I think transitioning from not just an automaker into a, a full-blown data-driven company that's uh, monetizing their insurance, as well as their FSD, which is really leveraging all the cars that they have on the road. Uh, Brian, we, we talked a bit about this this morning about how to value it now uh, on earnings or something else. How, how are you how are you getting to your target price right now? You know, I can't deny that they've actually executed quite well as a premium automaker. I think there are some headwinds ahead. We'll see how 2Q plays out between Shanghai shutting down and commodities. I just think when you look at the gap between the trillion dollar valuation and our three hundred billion dollar uh, target valuation, there's a lot of fluff built in around robots, robo-taxis, energies, which are all very speculative. Uh, Brian, what would it take for you to actually change that rating? Well, you know, this is what I think the company is worth. Now, that being said, we try to make trading calls in our notes. And I would point out that it's a very difficult stock to short as long as the narrative of executing well as an automaker is continuing, which I can't deny. It doesn't really have, we think, a Netflix, Facebook kind of moment till sometime in 23, where we see if all the capacity they're adding in China, in Europe, and in Texas can actually be sold at the kind of margins we saw in 1Q and the kind of volumes that those factories would need. Finally, Colin, last night he talked about uh, new production facilities uh, being launched in a period where they're, they, they're smarter than they were, for example, when they first got Shanghai underway. I wonder if you think that learning curve continues to slope up. Yeah, I think there's still another couple of lakes to it. You know, clearly, you know, going from Fremont into Shanghai was a massive change for the for the organization, and we'll see how things go with uh, both Berlin and Austin. But uh, clearly, they've they've demonstrated a history of learning from their mistakes, um, you know, and, and a willingness to make those mistakes. Um, you know, so as as we go forward, we're expecting them to continue that learning process, and and I think the the leaps are going to be a little bit smaller. But I think they, at this point, you know, with the changes in the design and, and the process, are getting to a place where they're they're just going to accelerate um, the volumes and and continue to drive costs lower, which I think does continue to, to drive a lot of margin here over the next four to five years. Guys, we'll keep it a little bit short today. Uh, we lost some time uh, after the president speaking uh, this hour, but we appreciate it very much. Colin and Brian, we'll see you again soon.